In this part we will deal with the remaining part of our algorithm. So we know if we're given a simple polygon, how to partition it into Y monotone pieces. And we know if we have a triangulation, how to solve the art gallery problem with at most n over 3 cameras, which is worst case optimal. So the only missing step is in between how to get from a Y monotone polygon to a triangulation. Let's have a look at a Y monotone polygon and we want to do something greedy. So we again want to go from top to bottom and collect vertices. And we greedily want to add an edge whenever it is possible. That's basically what we want to do. It's a very simple algorithm. We have to figure out the details later, of course. But let's just try to do it here. Maybe it's very easy. We start at the very top. So we have found this vertex. And now we keep walking. We look at the next vertex. We cannot add an edge here. We only have two so far. We get to the next vertex. We cannot add an edge here because it would be on the outside. We go to the next vertex. Again, we cannot add an edge from this to anyone. But once we find this, we can. Now this vertex sees this one, so we can add an edge here. Then it sees the previous one, we can add an edge there. And it sees that one, so we can add an edge there. And now everything up here is triangulated. So basically what happens now is that we continue with a smaller subproblem. We have another y monotone polygon that has this at the top vertex and this at the second top and we keep walking there. We find this vertex, it sees this one so we can connect it and we again get a smaller sub instance. We keep walking, we find this one, it sees this one so we can connect it. Again a smaller sub instance. We keep walking, we find this vertex, we cannot connect it to here. Find this vertex, this one we can add to this side. And so now we even get an edge from a vertex on the left boundary to another vertex on the left boundary. And this again cuts off something that's triangulated. So our new polygon follows these new diagonals and the boundary of the previous one. The next vertex we again can connect here. The next vertex on the right that we can connect to this one and we can connect it to this one. Again everything up here is triangulated. And that way we handle all the vertices, we walk downwards, and in the end, hopefully, we have triangulated the whole polygon. So this is a greedy algorithm that separates our polygon on the way into triangulated polygons and into some y monotone polygon that's not triangulated. So we probably want to prove the correctness by some induction. That means we need an invariant. What could be the invariant for our algorithm here? So what must hold true for everything we've looked at so far but not processed? Basically what we've processed so far will be a triangulation that's clear. What we haven't touched so far that will be a y monotone polygon that is clear. But there's this part in between if we start walking from top downwards here, here, here that we've already looked at but we haven't done anything. But what's the case for this part? Well, we know that all the vertices that we have on this part, except the top one, have to be reflex vertices. So vertices where the interior angle is greater than 180 degrees. If there would be a convex vertex somewhere, then we could connect it to someone before. So it's only while we will go outwards that we cannot connect anything. So basically everything we've seen but not yet triangulated is such a funnel. We can go to the left direction, we can go to the right direction, but it always has to bend outwards. As soon as it bends inwards, we can do some connection. So we have here two chains of reflex vertices in everything we've looked at so far. But that's not even enough. I mean, for example, if we look at these two vertices here, they are also reflex vertices, but we still could connect it upwards somewhere. So it's even stronger than this, because even in this funnel, we can connect a vertex from the left to a vertex from the right side. So in the only case where we don't do anything, if our funnel has only one chain. So we have very special funnels. And those funnels only have this one chain of reflex vertices, and on the other side it's just one edge or part of one edge. And if we encounter this, then it's very easy. When we get to the next vertex, 
we can just connect it to all these reflex vertices. So basically what happens is we walk from the top, we collect reflex vertices on one side until we either get a vertex from the other side or we get to a convex vertex. And then we connect it to the reflex vertices that we found so far or those that are reachable. And then we continue. Let's try to formulate this as an algorithm. We have our algorithm triangulate monotone polygon where we are given a y monotone polygon as a circular vertex list. So we have everything in circular order. And then we look at the vertices of this polygon u1 to un from top to bottom. So the one with the highest y coordinate first and then so on. And we want to put all the vertices that we've looked at so far but that we haven't handled onto some stack. So in the very beginning, we have the first two vertices on the stack. Those we haven't connected to anything. And then we continue with the next vertices. So how should this big part here look like? We get to the next vertex and how do we handle it? Basically, there are two cases, depending on where the new vertex that we find lies. If it lies on a different chain than the previous vertex, then we have case 1. If it lies on the same chain, then we have case 2. And the previous vertex is always the topmost of our current stack. So here, this is the top of the stack. This is the previous vertex that we've processed. What do we have to do in this case? We go backwards through the step and connect this vertex to all the vertices on the stack that it can see. And what are the vertices it can see? It's all of them. It's clearly all of them. You have a connection from here to there, and if we rotate this, we will encounter all these reflex vertices in order. So we can connect it to everything. So we just take the stack and we empty it. And for every vertex we take from it, we uh, draw this diagonal up to the last one. So we take the first one V that's here. Now this is our top vertex. We add the diagonal. We take the next one, V is here, now this is the top vertex, and we add the diagonal. Take the next vertex, V here, now this is the top vertex, so we add the diagonal. Then we take the next vertex, V, from the stack, but now there's nothing left on the stack, the stack is empty, because this is the topmost vertex. So now we don't want to connect it, that's already connected, so we do nothing here. And now how do we create our new polygon? we have to initialize the stack again. And on the stack, we want to have these two vertices. So we put uj and before it uj minus one, the previous one. What about the other case? We find a vertex on the same side as the chain that we have currently. So we have our vertex uj here, and this is currently the top of the stack. It lies on the same side then we want to check if we can add any of these connections. So we cannot connect it to the previous one because they lie on the boundary, so we pop that one from the stack first. Now this is the top vertex, and we want to check, can we add this connection? So we check, does uj see this top vertex? And if it does, then we pop it from the stack. And we add the diagonal. And then we keep going. We check, does it see the top vertex? If yes, we pop it and add the diagonal. And we check again, does it see the top vertex? In this case it does not, so we don't pop it from the stack, we don't continue. And now we get this triangulated sub -bodygon. What do we have to do to the stack now? This vertex is still on the stack, this one is not, this one is not, so we have to push these two onto the stack. And now we again have a sub-instance of a y monotone polygon. And when we get to the very last vertex, we just connect it to everything that's still left. So we connect it to all the vertices except the first, which will be the topmost and which is connected to the last, and the last one, which is the other neighbor. So we connect it to everybody except its two neighbors. And then we've created a triangulated polygon. What is the running time of this algorithm? Let's have a look. We already have the polygon as a circular vertex list, so it's already sorted in some sense. It means that we get this order easily by just walking along the polygon. 
So this takes linear time. Here we have a few stack operations, pushing to the stack, popping from the stack, that's always constant time, that's very easy. And then we have a loop that we do n minus three times. So we have order of n steps through this loop. But how long does one iteration of this loop take? All the operations here are constant time. We have a top operation, empty, pop, empty, draw a diagonal, push, push, pop, empty, top, pop, draw, push, push. It's all constant time. So one iteration of this loop only takes constant time. So this whole loop in total takes linear time. So the whole running time is in theta of n. Let's summarize. We have our algorithm here. We have an n-vertex polygon in order of n log n time. We find nice pieces with n prime vertices. And then in order of n prime time, we find n double prime triangles. So a y-monotone polygon with n vertices, we can triangulate in order of n time. And a simple polygon with both steps, we can divide into y-monotone polygons in order of n log n time. And in the homework, you will show that if we do this division, then the total complexity of all the polygons is still in order of n. So some of the vertices now appear in many of these y-monotone polygons. So it could be that the complexity com blows up. But it's still, if we sum up the vertices of the first polygon, plus the vertices of the second, plus of the third, and so on, it's still a linear number. And from that, it follows that we can triangulate a simple polygon with n vertices in order of n log n time. So we can solve the art gallery problem, worst case optimal, with an order of n log n time. Is this the best we can do? Are there better algorithms? There has been a lot of work on this problem. Triangulating a simple polygon is a very fundamental problem. Many very smart people have worked on it. And there has been a lot of process over the years. So this order of n log n time, it's a very nice and simple algorithm and very easy to implement. And if I, you ask me, hey, can you give me an algorithm that I want to implement to triangulate a polygon, then I would probably give you this one. But in theory, there are better ones. And the first one that was found was 1988 by Tarchan and Van Wyck. They gave an algorithm in order of n log log n time. So instead of log n, only log log n. That's really, really, really small. So if we take 1 million, then this is around 4. And this doesn't get too large. But this was even improved by Clarkson and again Tarchan and Van Wyck to an order of n log star n algorithm. And log star n is amazing. Log star n is how often do I have to take the logarithm of some number until I get to 1 or below 1. And if you take the number of atoms in the universe, then this is 4 or 5. So this is really small. But even that was improved, and that was by Chazelle in 1991. And he showed that you can solve it in truly linear time. And this is an amazing algorithm, it's an amazing result, but I don't think anybody has ever implemented it because it's so complicated. And there are only very few people that can really understand this algorithm and why it works in that time. And these are all combinatorial algorithms, but there are also randomized algorithms and they are much simpler. For example, in 92, they found a randomized algorithm where the expected running time is order of n log log n. And Raymond Seidel in 91 found a randomized algorithm that can do it in order n log star n time. And those are much simpler, but the running time is only in the expected case. So it's not a worst case upper bound, but only an upper bound on the expected running time. That's it for today. I hope you found some interest about guarding art galleries and triangulating polygons. And uh, you will see me again next week.